So, I wanted to get to the ongoing debacle involving MSNBC host Joanne Reed, because as you all know, a few months ago, there were these blog posts from her old blog, The Reed Report, that people discovered that were pretty homophobic, and once these came out, she apologized for it and said that, you know, her position on LGBT rights evolved, and she's sorry for it. So... There were more blog posts that came out in the last couple of weeks that showed that she said even more homophobic things. And since she already apologized for this blog, I thought that she probably would have just come out and apologized again and say, look, I, I understand that these are all really problematic things that I once said, but I no longer hold those feelings and, you know, um, I hope you guys can forgive me. However, this time, after already admitting that she had written homophobic things previously, she decided to deny that she wrote these things, which is weird. And her excuse was that she was hacked. So what she's alleging is that somebody not only hacked into her blog, but decided to emulate her writing style, her witty writing style, in order to write homophobic things that she never said, in hopes that one day someone would discover this and um destroy her career from it i mean it makes no sense it's obviously a lie so <laughs> she's maintaining however that she was hacked and that she never wrote them so she came out she apologized last week and she tried to change the conversation and i'll tell you why her apology is problematic a community that i support and that I deeply care about is hurting because of some despicable and truly offensive posts being attributed to me. Now, many of you have seen these blog posts circulating online and in social media. Many of them are homophobic, discriminatory, and outright weird and hateful. When a friend found them in December and sent them to me, I was stunned. Frankly, I couldn't imagine where they'd come from or whose voice that was. In the months since, I've spent a lot of time trying to make sense of these posts. I hired cybersecurity experts to see if somebody had manipulated my words or my former blog. And the reality is they have not been able to prove it. But here's what I know. I genuinely do not believe I wrote those hateful things because they are completely alien to me. But I can definitely understand based on things I have tweeted and have written in the past why some people don't believe me. I've not been exempt from being dumb or cruel or hurtful to the very people I want to advocate for. I own that. I get it. And for that, I am truly, truly sorry. I had a conversation the other day with a friend who's also an advocate in the LGBTQ community in Florida, who rightly took me to task for my tweets mocking Ann Coulter using transgender stereotypes. I apologize to my friend and I want to apologize to the trans community and to Ann. Those tweets were wrong and horrible. I look back today at some of the ways I've talked casually about people and gender identity and se sexual orientation, and I wonder who that even was. But the reality is that like a lot of people in this country, that person was me. I grew up in a household that, like many in America, had conservative views on LGBTQ issues. I had friends, some of my closest friends, in fact, growing up, who I later learned were gay and who had kept it secret from me and from everyone else we were close to because they didn't know what we would say, or if we would still be friends, or whether we would look at them differently. I can remember a friend of mine, my freshman year in college, telling me he was gay, and my knee-jerk reaction being that it was so disappointing to the women he could have married. He was so hurt, he didn't speak to me for months. I'm heartbroken that I didn't do better back then, knowing so many great people in the LGBTQ community, including amazing friends and journalists and producers and political operatives and great dads and moms and advocates and just regular people, and knowing how hard it must have been for so many of them to come out to their families, to their friends, to just walk around in the world, especially for trans people. And I feel like I should have known better than to ever write or tweet in a way that could make fun of or make light of or make light of that pain and that experience. Even a decade ago, when the country was in a very different place. But I cannot take any of that back. I can only say that the person I am now is not the person I was then. Okay, so as you can see there, she didn't really address what we were all really concerned about, which was why she decided to lie about being hacked. It was obvious that she wasn't hacked and that she said those things. But again, 
she gets a total pass for being homophobic before. I'm a gay person. I deal with familial and societal homophobia pretty frequently, but I think that when people come out and they evolve, when they change their opinion on LGBT rights, that's not something that is a bad thing. It's certainly a good thing. So what incentive do we have to shit on people who have come around and who are now allies? We don't. And clearly, I don't think that Joanne Reed harbors those same feelings. I trust her. I trust that she's an ally who genu genuinely wants to do right by the LGBT community. So the fact that she focused on this it shows that she's trying to change the discussion. She's trying to prove to us that she's not homophobic when really what we want answers to is why she decided to lie about it. Because I would have never referred to Joanne Reed as a liar up until this point. A disingenuous smear merchant? Yes. Uh, a Democratic Party political hack? Yes. Someone who hates progressives? Yes. A liar? Not necessarily. Typically what she tends to do is obscure details um you know she would omit facts about progressives uh, just last week i covered a segment about how she profiled 2020 presidential contenders but left out bernie sanders so i mean i don't i don't think that there's any evidence that she just outright lied to viewers up until this point because clearly she is lying and that calls her integrity completely into question because if she's willing to just lie so flippantly about something that we all know is not true, then what else is she willing to lie about? Now, these old blog posts that were unearthed using the Wayback Machine, which takes screenshots of older websites and catalogs them, well, the reason why her hacking claim specifically doesn't hold up at all is because, as CNN's Tom Clutt explains, Reed's claim rests on the idea that a hacker was tampering with her blog not years after the fact, but contemporaneously, sometimes within days or even hours of the events that were the subject of the posts and that she never noticed. So it's not possible that she was hacked, and I don't even believe that she's experiencing cognitive dissonance, that she can't believe that she'd ever say something so horrible about gay people. I don't even believe that. I think she knows she's lying, but she's choosing to do it anyway. I'm just surprised personally that she didn't choose to blame the Russians. It seems like something she would do. So, Joy, you get a pass for homophobia. You've changed. You don't have to prove to us that you're no longer homophobic. Nobody believes that. I, I think, actually, I don't think I've seen anyone who still contends that Joanne Reed is homophobic or still harbors those feelings towards gay people. Nobody believes that. But what we are concerned about is the fact that you chose to lie about it after you already fucking admitted that you wrote homophobic things just a few months ago. Why would you choose to lie about that? It makes no sense. This doesn't add up, and it's such an odd story because if you've already owned up to something... Why would you not own up to it again, knowing the response last time? I mean, when those homophobic blog posts came out, she owned up to it and apologized, and pretty much that was that. I didn't even talk about it on my program. Because, yeah, people change, and that's something we celebrate. We don't shit on them if they had views that they no longer have and changed. I mean, that, that's just counterproductive. So, I, I, it boggles my fucking mind that she would choose to lie about this. So, I mean, of course, this calls her credibility into question. And then you have people at MSNBC like Rachel Maddow come out saying, I've never been more proud to be an associate of Joanne Reed or something along those lines. It's just, really, you've never been more proud after she exposed herself as a liar for the dumbest reason ever? Again, Joy, you didn't have to lie about this. We already forgave you the last time. So, why wouldn't we forgive you a second time? And yes, it is the case, to be fair, that what was discovered this time, I mean, the posts she made were a lot more homophobic, but again, I don't care. I don't give any fucks whatsoever about the things she said because I know she no longer feels that way. I have no doubt in my mind that Joanne Reed is an ally to the LGBT community. To progressives, no, but to the LGBT community, yes. So I just, I, I, I don't understand why she would lie. And basically force us to think about whether or not she's willing to lie about other things. I mean, this calls her credibility into question. And it's something that you don't want to do as a journalist. I mean, you're supposed to cultivate trust among your viewership. And here you are lying about something that's obvious. 
We all know you're lying. I, I haven't seen a single person, even neoliberals who support Joanne Reed, who are friends with Joanne Reed, who think she's telling the truth about this. So why not just tell the truth about this? It's like me lying and saying that I have 11 fingers instead of 10. Well, why would I lie about that when you can easily prove that I only have 10? Why would I still insist that I have 11 fingers if you can see that I have 10? I mean, it's easily disprovable, so why lie about something like that? It makes no sense to me, but um, certainly, if Joanne Reed is willing to lie about this, then she is willing to lie about other things. Now, again, I never thought she was a liar. I always thought she was a disingenuous Democratic Party hack and smear merchant. But now, certainly, if she's willing to lie about something so idiotic, then she's willing to lie at the behest of the Democratic Party establishment. So that's something you have to keep in mind if you watch Joanne Reed. In fact, if I was... A regular viewer and fan of Joanne Reed, I would be offended that she chose to lie about something so dumb. Support this podcast by becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash humanist report.